Oh yeah, fresh baby redbacks for dinner. Scrumptious. Crikey, Charlie, she's massive. The beep has been removed from this video, and as always, this video is highly educational. Beep, beep, beep. Remember last spring, the Weather Bureau said we're in for this really hot, disastrous, fire-prone summer? I think they might have got it a little bit wrong. Okay, it's Sunday the 18th of February. I'm gonna check up on my redback spider, which is in a spider lure here. Her name is B2. I think she's been very busy making egg sacs. I'm gonna be very careful opening up this. Okay, the lid is free. And that's what's going on down there. Crikey, Charlie, she's been a busy girl. Well, four egg sacs there. I made a mistake. I should have put a little dot on each one as they were being introduced here uh, because I'd be potentially maybe a week and a bit out from one of them hatching uh, she's going to be quite aroused because I'm here now and I've got something hopefully to keep her distracted if that makes any sense if I feed her hopefully it's going to distract her crikey this is going to be gnarly I've got for B2 a beautiful mole cricket I call them devil bugs because they look quite sinister and I'm going to very carefully feed this to her to distract her while I do some other work so the theory is if I drop this into the web there, it's going to alert B2 and B2 is going to come up here and check out what the hell is going on. Okay, looks like she's putting a lot of web around the front there of the mole cricket, so she's starting to work in controlling those front legs. It's a sort of critter that she would encounter uh, naturally, they're all around the place near her nest area they're a nighttime critter they make a lot of noise the mole crickets now down there without me holding it by tweezies uh, b2 has put a lot of web around those front what would you call them diggers it's got some very very intense front claws and b2 sort of knows that she knew where to tackle this critter it's a formidable thing to take out and now she's putting web around the back just stunning to watch i'm just getting this done in the cooler part of the day it's been terribly humid not very high temperatures but the humidity has just been fripping killing it hasn't taken long for this to get to this point i haven't really seen her going for some bites i've just seen her doing a lot of web work and it only takes a couple of bites or well, maybe that's what's going on there yeah uh, she's putting some bites into that the back aspect i don't know what the thing on the back of this mole cricket's called but I'm pretty sure it's getting a dose of venom. Had a freaking sting, I tell you. I'd say by this point here, the cricket uh, won't be coming out unless a miracle happens. Seems to be chewing on something there at the front. Let me just get that iPhone around a bit further, like that. Yeah. Yeah, she was a bit standoffish with this to start with. I mean, the Redbacks seem to know what they can deal with. But I did give her a helping hand if you didn't quite notice. <laughs> I certainly wasn't going to let her suffer. But I've got a task to do here to stop my sufferance of redbacks. And that'll be the thing I'll be doing as soon as she's preoccupied enough with the mole cricket. There's a bit of a wider shot. It's all, in a sense, very small scale. It's, uh, it's you know, the mole cricket's quite big. Um... They're the noisy things at night in the backyard. They really get up a big noise. Well, the mole cricket's still got a bit of zest in it. I suppose it's been playing out for about, maybe about five minutes, six minutes. And the thing with the x axe is the most yellow one, and I'll hopefully explain this as I pull some of these out, is a, in a sense the freshest one. The one which is the funny shape and in a sense, well, the darker one, although you may not see it, through the camera i think that's the one that was laid up on the 31st of january like it would be maybe a week or something out from hatching that's why i want to get rid of it now 
Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm thinking of leaving one in here. The most yellow one would be the most recent one. I'm thinking of leaving it in here uh, so Barbie doesn't freak out. And I'll just go over to the action here. Yeah, that mole cricket would be stinging like all crazy, I tell you. And I'm pretty sure B2 is totally in control. I've got a feeling if I go to grab one egg sac, I think they're all going to come out because they're all going to be webbed together. It's just a matter of having a go very soon. I think the time is getting close. There's been a lot of web put out onto that, onto that mole cricket. I noticed the egg sacs have been put down the bottom of the lure here. I think that's because it's been so hot. It's probably the cooler part of this device. Without saying the word trap. And I'll get into a position and I'll start to grab the egg sacs. If I go wide like that, you'll see the action. You'll see if B2 is going to react. I think the way to, to think about the egg sacs is it's every, basically every four days she can generate one. I was a little bit surprised how good she was at uh, getting the egg sacs to go. Got nice long tweezies here. And it's a matter of getting a nice little grasp on one and pulling up and seeing what I've caught and of course all as I thought all of them are coming out as one but notice that B2 is totally distracted I think I've left one behind okay so that's three down not sure whether to leave one in I think that darkest one there is that's the first one that was laid up that that one there would be gnarly inside so I think she knows something's going on. Uh, she's not talking to me. I can't understand what Redback say, although she's coming up my way, so that's going to completely wreck the focus. And she does that to me, doesn't she? There she's back in focus. I think she realises something's happened here. She's saying that big goose with the light in my face is up there again. He feeds me, which is nice, but he's also stolen something from me as well. I'd say that mole cricket's ripping history. Good night, sister, to the mole cricket. I might grab that other egg sack out. Uh, so we're back to basically a clean slate, if that makes any sense. Oh, God, it's going to get gnarly. Uh, of course, it never happens like the way you want it. Oh, God. Back you go, girl. Oh, okay, yeah, she's getting a bit upset. Yeah, look, she's seeing me as the enemy. Back you go. Back down back down girl come on b2 be nice that's it good girl good girl i'll just come in sneakily and try and get that egg sack again oh she's not happy is she i wouldn't be happy either if some clown was doing that to my family it's all caught up in web <clears throat> okay. just pull it up to the edge here and hopefully be able to there okay i've got it and B2 looks totally confused, but hey, you got a nice feed down there. Go and suck on that mole cricket, B2. Okay, I've done what I've had to do here. I will very carefully, as always, put on the lid to B2's home. Little spot there, okay, it's on. There was a red back living in this lure here. Uh, I think today's the day this red back is gonna become something for somebody else. So very carefully look underneath here, see what's going on. Okay, she's still in here. It's time to say goodbye. Good night, little sister. Okay, she can become food for the ants. That's what the spider lures are all about. Getting these dangerous spiders, luring them, and then I've got control over them. Okay, okay, that's been cleaned out. I'll turn it over so we can lure another red back here. I'm out in the backyard now. I know there's a big ant nest underneath this old decaying log. What I'm going to do is I'm going to scalp open the egg sacs here. Uh, there's a spider that I took out from the front and I'm going to feed this, guess where? To the ant colony. Okay, these are the egg sacs opened up. This biggest one was the first one because I can see actively moving spiderlings there. And if you go back in time here, that might've been the next one along. The next one along and this one here was just mush. So yeah, this one here, maybe a week and a bit away from it hatching. My God, look at the amount of redbacks in there. It's astonishing. I just very carefully roll this away. There's a very good reason why there's no spiders in this area, because when you see what's going on underneath here, you'll understand why. Yeah. 
One of the best free meals these little ants are going to have for a very long time. Okay, come and get it. Oh yeah, fresh baby redbacks for dinner. Scrumptious. Just as the ants are trying to work out they got the best meal going tonight, I'm just going to show you just how manic one of the choco vines in our backyard is. It's really indicative of the crazy wet, humid summer we've had. I've never seen the choco vine take over the bottle brush tree. And if I go up like this, this is a tree that the cats when they were kittens loved to get into. It's just been completely taken over by the choco vine. Never seen it like that before. There's a wider shot and our chocos are a little bit strange. Well, chocos come on at different times of year, depending on where they are and what choco you've got. Our ones tend to come on at Easter time. So at this time of year, what I say the 18th of February, this is what we see. And I'll go in with a zoom like this. If I get my finger in there like this, you'll get a scale. That's, the choco is just starting to grow. I guess who doesn't eat chocos? Me. I reckon we've got enough choco here to feed the whole of planet Earth. And to me, it's just very indicative of the type of summer we've had. Wet and very, very humid. And it's been the sort of conditions, obviously, that choco vines love. Anyway, back at the ant farm here, the ants are having a good chit-chat with each other. And they're probably deciding what's going to be for breakfast, lunch or dinner. So much to choose from. A total delicacy in all different ways. Well, it's about to rain on me. What I'll do is I'll put the decaying old log back over the ant nest very carefully. It won't disrupt what's going on underneath there. I'll just roll it on like so. Back to as it was. Okay, that's how it should be. Well, the ants might get far more excited in a bit of privacy. Or it might be a simple case of me not paying them enough. Even the kookaburras thought that was funny. There seems to be quite a vicious storm that's come in around our place. I suppose it's a later part of summer. Yeah. And I was just going to say, there's a lot of lightning. Personally, I wouldn't be walking in a storm like this with an umbrella. And I wouldn't be hot sheltering under a tree either. I'd be, be in a car or get into a house. Ooh, toasty. If you're wondering about B2, this is the next day. We've had some massive storms, a lot of rain. Let's just see if she's accepted. Okay, the XX being taken away and the mole cricket's still in there. Let's see how she is. Okay, that's quite astonishing. She's massive in the rear end. You know what that means? More egg sacs. And that more cricket, let's just say it's it's had better days. Look at the size of B2. That is just astonishing. I know they can gorge themselves when they're feeding, and that's a classic example of it. Crikey, Charlie, she's massive. I told you B2 was a keeper. She's a spectacular redback. Crikey, she's massive at the moment. The main thing is she hasn't run away after I took her family away, those four XX. And before the storm really kicks in and takes us all out, I will get the lid back on top here. So she's nice and safe. Today is the 25th of February now. I've been looking at B2 every day, hoping there's going to be an egg sack. Okay, there is another egg sac. That's egg sac number five. That egg sac, of course, is derived from the mole cricket that I fed B2. B2 is very, very active. I haven't got my tweezies, but I got a bit of thick here. Oh, see what I mean? See how fast she can move? I'll just give another demo of how fast she can move around. She is really, really vibrant. Okay, like, you know, I wouldn't want to put my hand anywhere near that considering how fast she can move around in here. And also take note, she hasn't run away. She's going down to protect the egg sac because she probably thinks I'm coming down to steal it. And that egg sac is going to be protected and she'd be quite wary because she knows four others mysteriously disappeared. 
very much a case of history repeating so the clock gets reset and that egg sac will probably hatch in four to six weeks scary stuff let's have another peek at b2 and it stinks around here because this is where the cats like to do their business as always very carefully taking the lid off this is in the afternoon of the video that you just saw of b2 with the new egg sac and look what she's caught she's grabbed a skink from what i can see the skink is still breathing it's only just been captured i can see that its legs have been bound up so it can't do any moving but it looks like a very yummy meal for b2 i always told you she was a keeper what b2 needs to be really careful of is the much larger skinks that reside in the garden here i certainly know they're around and i think they would gobble b2 up in a flash in the natural world, there's always someone else out to eat you. I better put the red back spider control chart in this video so we're educational. Those spider egg sacs were laid up between the 31st of January to the 18th of February. I'm hoping that's 19 days. There were four egg sacs laid up, and if my maths is right or wrong, it works out to be four and three quarter days to produce one red back spider egg sac. Now, I could say this, that four egg sacs can produce, let's just say, a thousand redback spiderlings. And you can't see what happens in the next few days, but I know another two egg sacs get laid up, because that's what happened while I was editing this video. So yes, B2 is a very, very busy redback spider. It's now raining. There is another redback spider lure out the front. You thought I forgot about this one. The redback would have been in here for, well, basically a month now. And I'm going to very carefully open up the lid here and see what's going on inside. I didn't forget about this spider. I just, well, let's just say put her on the back burner. No pun intended. Okay, uh, there she is. And crikey, she's grown a bit, hasn't she? Well, it's time to love you and leave you. Good night, sister. Dusted. I'll do a very, very quick update of what's going on with the stink bugs. I'm using my uh, white vinegar detergent water mix, and after a bit of time, the stinkies, they don't like it. Uh, which is really nice. It takes a, a bit of time, 10 minutes, to pull down the adults. Uh, but that little boy or girl is going to be dead soon. Jeez, I'm sad. I'll just gently give him or her the flick. Now I've got stink bug eyes and this is being shot, I'll just say, at the end of summer. In fact, we're past summer. And I see that there, that's stink bug eggs which have hatched. So the nymphs are on here, but because I've sprayed the tree, guess what? Them nymphs are gonna die. There was a clump of the little shitters up here and what I do is I spray it and then I give the tree a bit of a shake. And what I find is they fall to the ground. So what you find under here is the drips from the spray that I put on the tree and dead stink bugs. And in my books, the only good stink bug is a dead stink bug.